today we are going to discuss about your talk uh, in CSI coaching about the management of bleeding complications after thrombolysis. So I would like to ask you sir, how commonly you see this kind of complications after thrombolysis? Well, it depends on which type of thrombolytic therapy, which agent you are using. Generally, the incidence is between 0.5% uh, to 2% mm -hmm. of uh, patients who receive thrombolysis. Mm -hmm. It also depends on which type of uh, center you are looking at the statistics. It would be slightly higher in a tertiary center where there are a lot of complicated cases being referred. Mm -hmm. Patients who undergo angiography and after angiography, if there is an issue about acute myocardial infarction, you can do angioplasty or give a thrombolytic therapy. And in these patients where after procedure, patient develops MI, then bleeding complications would be slightly higher. Uh, bleeding complications are generally classified as minor and major. There mm -hmm. are different types of cl cl classification. Mm -hmm. Generally, severe uh, uh, bleeding complication uh, bleeding complication is considered as severe if there is a tremendous fall in the hemoglobin of more than 5 uh, grams per mm -hmm. uh, 100 ml or if it is giving rise to any hemodynamic compromise mm -hmm. or if there is any intracranial or intra-abdominal bleeding mm -hmm. which is difficult to control. These type of bleedings are considered as major bleeding. Right. Any superficial bleeding uh, in the skin uh, echimosis could occur. These are all considered as minor bleeding and minor bleeding can occur fairly more common because of displacement of IV lines mm -hmm. and all that but they are generally not considered very important mm -hmm. yeah. and if you include these minor bleedings then the incidence could be slightly higher right, but sir. not much consequence to the patient. Right sir. So as you correctly said uh, about the major and minor bleeding so do you see any specific agent or specific thrombolytics which actually cause this kind of major or minor bleeding in higher incidences? Uh, bleeding complications are generally more common with the older thrombolytic agents, but there is no big statistical difference between the two. Mm -hmm. The newer agents, the chances of bleeding complications are less. Uh, it also depends if you are aggressive in the dose. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in those cases, the bleeding complication would be more with any thrombolytic agent. Right, sir. So, uh, for these patients, what is the modality of management, sir? How do you follow for the patients to manage? Most important, we have to identify patients who are prone to bleeding complications. And if we select uh, these patients properly, then we can prevent bleeding complications. For mm -hmm. example, elderly people, octogenarian mm -hmm. patients, or those patients with severe hypertension of systolic blood pressure more than 180 or more than 200 millimeters of mercury mm -hmm. or a mean blood pressure of more than 130 millimeters of mercury which are prone to uh, higher chances of uh, bleeding complications after thrombolytic therapy. Mm -hmm. Also patients who have had hemorrhagic stroke more than uh, uh, less than three months ago or any stroke less than uh, in a, a few days old. Mm -hmm. Any patient who has undergone major abdominal or major surgery, right, these are patients who are prone to bleeding complications mm -hmm. after thrombolytic therapy and in these patients we should avoid thrombolytic therapy as much as possible. If the patient has a history of GI bleed in the mm -hmm. recent past mm -hmm. uh, or if there is an endoscopically proven ulcer, then these are the patients also who will have a higher incidence of bleeding complications and they should be avoided and prevention is much better. Right. than treating the uh, complication of uh, bleeding after thrombolytic therapy because basically there are no specific guidelines mm -hmm. as to how we should treat these bleeding complications. Mm -hmm. And all the data is extrapolation of bleeding because any other cause mm -hmm. and that data is extrapolated onto patients who have developed bleeding after thrombolytic therapy. So there are no specific guidelines and that is why it is better to prevent rather than repent. Right, sir. So, uh, how do you see, sir, the role of blood transfusion for these patients who are maybe having a major bleeding? In patients who have got minor bleeding complication, they do not require blood transfusion at all. In fact, it is a dictum that blood transfusion in bleeding complications after thrombolytic therapy mm -hmm. should be avoided as much as possible because blood transfusion itself has its own deleterious effect mm -hmm. because of inflammatory reactions and all that. And the one-year mortality in gusto was definitely more 
than in, in patients who did, uh, received blood transfusion as compared to those who did not receive blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. So blood transfusion should be reserved for patients who have got drastic fall in hemoglobin below 8 millimeters, uh, below 8 grams per 100 ml. But this should not be taken as a uh, very divine figure. Right. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, has no other symptoms, then I would not give blood to this patient. Right. However, if there is a significant fall with hemodynamic compromise and ischemic symptoms or documentation of ischemia, in spite of correction of the lesions mm -hmm. in the coronary artery, and if that ischemia and hemodynamic disturbance is directly attributed to blood loss, then only patient should uh, receive uh, blood transfusion. Right. As far as possible, components would be better than whole blood. Right, sir. And uh, sir, uh, how do you see the long-term prognosis for these patients? You are talking about the gasto one-year uh, mortality benefit or the prognosis. So, in your practice, uh, what's your experience? How do you see patients who are coming with major bleeding complications? Another issue about bleeding complications is that we have to tone down or stop antiplatelet and antithrombotic agents. Mm -hmm. And because we have to stop these agents for some time or a long period of time, these patients have, are prone to reinfarction, re-ischemic episode. If they have uh, earlier undergone any stenting or CABG, in, those patients, this, uh, in this patient there is early occlusion of the stent or the grafts. Mm -hmm. And that's why the morbidity and mortality and repeat events in these patients are very high. Right. So, any patients who have had a BD complication, we would be very cautious about short term as well as long term prognosis of these patients. Right, sir. So, sir, if I ask you to just summarize your uh, overall message in two key messages, what would be your take home message, sir, for the audience? First, we should identify patients who are, who are likely to be prone or potential candidates for bleeding right. and tone down the dose of thrombolytic agents or avoid thrombolytic agents altogether in this particular group of patients. And having had a bleeding complication, as far as possible, avoid blood transfusion unless and until there is a dire need of dire consequences and avoid this bleeding, uh, uh, blood transfusion in this group of patients. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Complications after thrombolysis. Well, it depends on which type of thrombolytic therapy, which agent you are using. Generally, the incidence is between uh